it's no use.
as uh, we all volunteer to maybe help cook a bit. We didn't know it would continue so long, but we're all still here and we're here till the end. I uh, started the first morning with a big pot of soup on the stove that Florence Elderton had come in and prepared for us. Uh, since then, we've had six burners going day, ten hours a day. Uh, the oven's still oven going, haven't stopped. Uh, I think we had a lot of food out of people's freezers, which we're very thankful for at the beginning. And uh, lots of turkeys. And since then, uh, we've progressed. We've got more things available, more helpers. And uh, as you'll see as we go through the Legion, the Legion is a little different looking today than, than what we normally have here. Uh, companies have been donating to us. Uh, churches, friends, pots, pans, pails they brought in to feel, feed large quantities of people. Uh, lots of supplies now. We don't know if the Legion will ever look the same. We've uh, probably damaged a little bit of their carpets, but uh, hopefully everything will be okay. <laughs> this is the upstairs. We have uh, our snack table, so we can prepare it easily to get it out at lunchtime. Uh, companies have been sending in food. We've got some butter and ketchups and things that were needed. We have a crew that comes here generally at lunchtime. Uh, our own Hemingford crew that are working on the roads, they have lunch up here. Um, now we've got almost professional. We've got uh, takeout plates for people that are at home uh, that need a, a hot meal. Bread companies have delivered, milk companies are delivering. Uh, we've certainly, uh, we've finally been noticed and uh, the food's coming in, so we'll be able to stay here and feed people for quite a few days yet. Would you like to come down and see our bar? We have a Roger was a good soup stirrer here. Jerry is our our driver, along with Yves Poisson, who's not here for the minute. Uh, these guys have been running two, three times a day. Uh, two, three times, two, three meals a day to the school in Hemingford. Uh, sometimes they have to make five trips down to bring the food. They started off using candles to get down the stairs. Now we've graduated to lights. And uh, we still are keeping up our Legion functions. We have crutches and, we, uh, and uh, walkers that we put out during all this crisis when people have broke ankles and what have you. So we're also performing that service. And uh, more supplies. And these stairs were very dark. Uh, we used candles. We had no power, no, no heat the first days we started. Uh, we worked in those conditions for a week and a half, and it's getting a lot more comfortable. Today they even provided me with a telephone. Now I've got to figure out how to use it. These are the stairs that were very treacherous for men to come down with hot pots, but they made it. They got it to the school, and everybody's safe. Now, this is where we had to keep our cool area. We have our pastries. Ross Farmer and, and many other guys, uh, even days before Ross came, and yesterday Ross came in and got us quite well organized. We have our fruit that we have to keep cold. Uh, our bread companies that come and deliver milk, flour, lovely frozen goods that we have to push out as fast as we can to feed people. Uh, last night we got a milk delivery. That'll keep us going for quite a few days. On yesterday, which is day, how many days is this now we've had no power? Since the 6th and we're at the 20th today. So yesterday we finally got one freezer, which we've been able to put a lot of things in. We have tin goods. We got an 
offer of another freezer and another freezer. So we, we took them because we feel we need them to keep the food cold. We don't want anyone to end up sick. This is our, what our main aim was at the beginning. The conditions. You know, I want to step outside, we have another freezer. So I want people to know that we, uh, we'll be able to feed everybody. No matter how long the storm goes on, no matter how long the storm goes on, all the kitchen crew are ready to stay on and help. We've had uh, some new volunteers come in since then. Now this is Hemingford's Legion's Bar. As you know, I mentioned this is the cold room, but we've had to be able to keep our uh, bar pipes, uh, the pipes in the Legion, from freezing. So we found some plastic in the <coughs> basement. We made a room. We have a heater on in the back to keep those hot and keep it cool in here. If you'd like to follow us into our warm room, our TV room as we call it, because we got a TV now, since we've had power, we don't have much time to watch. I'd like you to check out our beer freezers. We now have food in our beer freezers. No more beer. So the guys have been working hard trying to, to keep the uh, food, uh, keep it good. We don't want to waste anything. There's one of our first lamps we got. We had a few lamps and a few candles the first few days and I think one or two flashlights we used those and uh, since then we're graduating along. Come to the basement with me. We have water. We have we have so many things now that we're grateful to the people of our neighbors, friends, uh, people on the out, outside Montreal, uh, Valley Field, different places that have, that have called and offered their help. Uh, this we're fortunate we have a basement in the Legion. We've been able to keep our, our perishables like potatoes and carrots from freezing because the temperature down here is just it's perfect. We have diapers for the babies. We have uh, Kleenex for the people that are catching colds and uh, it's fantastic. And I guess we'll all remember this is the big storm that we uh, don't even know yet how long it's going to take before it's over and how long before everybody gets hydro. So we're hoping in the days in the future that we can help everybody. Now maybe Randy would like to come with me. We have Randy Merlin as our video camera man today who's uh, offered his camera and his services. We really appreciate. Maybe he'll come down and, and see some of the other people and what they're doing through the village. And uh, Hopefully we can get you some tape of this later on. We can all sit down and watch it and laugh one day when the power's back on. Many pots? I, I didn't count it. You gave up counting after the 
the first 50, 100 pounds of carrots, oh, you feel? Yeah. Oh, yes. So you had many jobs here feeling carrots? Many jobs. Okay, keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, this is a generator that Hydro sent. This is um, propels enough electricity for the, the post office, the municipal town halls, and the Legion. And the Legion needs it because that's where the food's coming from to be cooked for the shelter. Let's go inside the city hall. something that it would be official that they could go into the countryside and speak to some people. Okay, I have to see you, uh, Colin. Yeah. You got some budget over there? Yeah, just Hello. a minute. Found it working uh, without uh, power. Yeah. Boom. Come in to get any today? Cold. 
Very cool. Okay. Okay. So without without a computer uh, and also the cash, how how do you make out the receipts for the customers and by the bills? Hand. You do everything by hand, the yeah. old way. Counted everything by hand. Goodness for cool days. This is the fridge where we see you upstairs. Okay, finished here. Up there, be up there. Okay. Uh, 
she was the first lady to put the first pot of soup on it, which opened the door to Pierre and Oldies one day, and I was able to get supplies that I needed, which was very good. Uh, would you like to explain who you are, sir? Oui, bonjour. Uh, mon nom est Alain Dornus, travailleur communautaire au CNC, responsable du groupe Santé. Et j'ai à organiser, à voir à l'hygiène, tout ce qui est problème santé, infirmière avec les médecins, et supporter les gens au besoin. Alors ce sont les sans collaboration, tous ensemble. Linda, what have you been doing here? I know you're the mayor's wife. We started out in the preliminary stages of evacuating up on Covey Hill, and bringing people to the first shelter after they were evacuated from there and came over here. And we just kind of opened a clinic and been taking it from there, and Natalie kicked it off, and I helped her, and Ella and Lawrence uh, jumped in, and you were here. Good. Um, you're working with health and hygiene. Yeah, you have to do it very soon. Okay. Serious. So, thank you very much. These gentlemen might be back. This is going to be for Hemi Fuse. Keep it Hemingford so we know what and the archive name. Yes. Archive name. You might see them from time to time popping in. They have to report in this. Say again? They have to report in here. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The girls, we don't care. Just the guys, right? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yeah. And what's your duty? Oh, I'm a I'm a doctor with the. Uh, oh, good. The She's got a Red Cross. Come I'm around so we can Red Cross. Me too. <laughs> I'm up in food. Oh yeah. Okay. Excuse Damn. me, uh, sir. Where where are you hailing from, anyway? Uh, originally. Yeah. Uh, units from uh, Brandon, Manitoba. Shiloh, Manitoba is the base. I'm originally from Edmonton, though. So we're out here. Um, just going around checking some of the uh, shelters out and seeing how people are doing. Is it, is it on? And we want a future having for it's okay no. with Carl. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I see the phone. Do you have lunch? Yeah. Good. Good, good yes. Oh, well, we, we're cooking good up the leech. And where'd you send it to Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> Told you guys we'll feed you if you yeah. want a bite. And I put Dunkin' Donuts. There is no <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts here. Hemingford leech. We got all kinds of donuts. Yeah, but we, I don't like it. I don't like donuts. Oh, we're just teasing you. <laughs> anyway. These guys, are go they're going to have an official letter. Yeah. Okay. They're going to go around um, the countryside and that and take some pictures for Hemingford to keep in the municipality. Okay. okay. So Carl's going to give them a letter. Yes. Oh, this is her camera crew, John and Randy. Oh, you got an official camera crew. We got an Carl demand of one, we got one. But we never turn them. We're always working in the dark, but we don't have to. We have power here, you know. Yeah, I know. I, I, we don't have to worry about it, do we? No. We can put all the lights on. Yeah. I mean, when we come in, we should turn the lights on or whatever rows are on. Do you want me to explain what we're doing? Very brief. Very brief. This is our, our control board, okay, of who's in and who's not in. Of the fraud squad and the SQ. Okay, this is the special SQ detachment from outside of the disaster area. So you have five here, five in the left St. Bernard. And so we're, they have a special dedicated line here, and the FWAD squad have a special dedicated line over there. The FWAD squad is all the girls. From, I think there's there's nine here, and they're mostly from CVR the last two years, except for Freya, who I think goes to the Catholic school in Napierville. So you got a bunch of young people that are working very hard. Yeah. Here. And our what we're doing is keeping track of all the houses and the people, where they are, any problems, constant communication. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Plus the newsletter. Yes, we have a wonderful newsletter.
Marjorie and Charlie for enjoying their lunch.
like in the next hundred years? For the next hundred years. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, come here. You're you're gonna help me explain. I'm just gonna take pictures after. You're gonna take pictures. All right. What we got here is, as you can see, wood, right? Where'd all this wood come from, Jay? It came from trucks, and it came from the people who donated wood. All right. Uh, I think this wood here, in fact, this particular load comes from Guelph, Ontario, uh, courtesy of Highland Seeds, who's probably going to be out of business in 100 years, but who cares? So uh, how many days have you been doing this for anyways? Let's see, we've been giving out wood. We started on maybe last Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. First, uh, the first wood was local wood that we scrounged around for. Uh, soon after that, we got donations uh, from everywhere. Most, mostly within Quebec, you know, there's stuff coming from, what, Kutsmi? Some from Ontario, yeah. Uh, Rimouski, that whole area. So what's the, uh, what's the deal, what's the catch? Uh, no catch. Any, there's no, no catch. catch? It all comes free, transport included. Uh, and basically what we do is we give out, a, this, we have this little measuring device here, which is uh, more or less a quarter cord. We give that out to every family who wants to every other day. Every, so every other that, day, uh, every two days? Every uh, two days. Every two days? We figure that's enough for two days burning. So, uh, your name, sir? I'm David Smith. Okay. Thank you very much, David Thanks, Smith. Thanks, Randall. Oh, uh, part of uh, B Battery 1R stage, eh? I hate looking at cameras. <laughs> okay, behind you, you'll notice the map of the area that we're uh, responsible for. Our battery is located uh, roughly in the town of Hemingsford, which is right here, as you know. Now our areas of responsibility are marked in the highlighted areas, which is this one, this one, and this one over here. Over here on the right is St. Bernard uh, de la Colle, and that's uh, Warren Minas, that's his area. The other TSM is in charge of uh, telephone poles in, that, uh, in this area, and that's uh, Warren Officer Ma uh, Matson, and he's not in the area right now because he's putting up telephone poles. This area up here was also uh, Warren Minas' uh, area, and that's pretty well, has the electricity passed on to it. If you'll notice, uh, just hang on Raj, if you notice around the area here now, we have, uh, this room is uh, the principal's office from this school. It's been converted into a command post. When I'm done here, I'm gonna send them over to you, okay? Uh, the communicators are located here. We have two telephones hooked up in this room with uh, the cell phones, and they all linked in through here, and our, um, our uh, man packs, which are located in the back. And what this does, it gives us communications with all the transport drivers that are out on the road. And just to point to note that because of the way the uh, road situations are, and all the fallen trees and wires, we have to make sure that uh, every driver that leaves this area leaves with some sort of communication just because of the hazards that are out there. Back over here, at the uh, battery commander, Major George, we've basically converted this office for him to hold his old groups and uh, his conferences. And uh, he basically uh, looks after any of the people that come in, like the uh, town mayor or our commanding officer when he drops by for conferences and that. The map's on the back. The one on the left is for the occupancy for, the t for this area. And the one on the right is just the detailed areas that we're working with Hydro-Quebec right now. So basically all the briefings and all the orders are passed on from our BC, who is Major George, from this room, and then our section commanders will take it out and pass it on to the troops. Okay? The back room, on this side, this is where basically we have all our storage and equipment, and uh, it basically gives uh, the battery commander and the, the battery 2IC uh, some privacy when they want to make calls up to a higher command, which is call sign 0 or call sign 8. Okay, we'll come out here. Just, I've already got them through these three rooms, sir. The, the whole school has been converted into a, basically a, a work area slash a sleeping arrangement area. Okay, if you come in here, this is the battery uh, QM where we hold all our stores. If you look right now, we have uh, boxed rations on, on the inside over here. This is uh, Bombardier Gartley. He looks at, he's the 2IC of the QM and he looks basically after uh, passing out of canteen supplies or small supplies like rations or, or uh, stoves and lanterns. Okay, if you come in here, you see this basically what, if you come around the back here, all the equipment is stored in where a classroom used to be in the back here. Alright, the, this, the, right now they have four QM guys that work in here and they also sleep in here. This is their little uh, sleeping area. Okay, the canteen, we also have a canteen set up just for the, for the guys because there's, you know, hard for them to get to the store and that. Alright, if you come out this way. Basically all the uh, classrooms in that are set up uh, for uh, as living arrangements for the soldiers that are housed there. This is one of the sections that are located right here. We've got some guys in here sleeping right now. And if you'll notice, uh, the, right now there's about 10 to 12 guys asleep in each room. And this one here is one of the sections that are in uh, uh, one of the platoons that are in charge. 
Okay, and this is uh, all part of uh, Warren Officer Matson's outfit here. Okay. Okay, down here is where the, our, we had to hook up our own kitchen supplies and that. So uh, what we did was uh, the kitchen is outside, the, all these supplies are brought indoors. The cooks work in the hallways and that, basically what they do is to prepare the meals, like, you know, chopping the potatoes and that up, and then they bring them outside to the kitchen truck. Here on camera, boys, smile. This is the, uh, the kitchen staff that works outside. And you see, all the, we have a lot of, uh, actually a lot of food is laid out for them, eh? Uh, this is the stuff that they readily consume at the, like the, their desserts and their pies and everything. And if you come down here, you see where uh, the sergeant stores all this stuff. You want to introduce yourself to the camera? There's nothing in there. I'm oh, sorry, Rick. It's no, <coughs> we don't have anything to put in there. Right now? Okay, so basically, and if you had come here a few days earlier, the gym was converted into a, a sleeping arrangement for 22 engineers, but they've already moved up uh, to, I think it's Napierville? That's where they're gone. They're, they're on that way anyway. So if you come outside, we'll show you the truck inside. You want to show them the inside of your truck? Shift, uh, animal shelter that was developed during this crisis for uh, people to keep their dogs that may be living in the shelter. Or not. My name is Nelson Cage, and uh, Marcus Steidelman is the person that's director of this operation, and uh, me and my wife are, uh, I guess, assistants. We have uh, approximately 18 dogs, and I think we're up to 20 cats right now. It varies. Some people uh, move off and they take their animals away and other ones come in because it's just been too cold. Sometimes we've we found a few animals that were left in houses without the people being there, but we've contacted the owners and those have all been taken care of. Um, the operation was set up during the height of the cold weather when there was no power specifically for these little animals. Need care to get survived by themselves. There used to be so a lot of their owners come in uh, periodically to check on their animals? Technically, uh, or officially, the owners are supposed to come in and take care of their own animals, but for several reasons, sometimes they can't. People that are working away from here or have moved away before the crisis have brought their animals here, we take care of them. We make sure that they're all uh, watered and fed and regularly exercised and taken out and fed clean. And we're doing the best we can. I think we're doing all right. <laughs> that sounds good. Thank you very much.
just tell me, okay, what's your name, sir? Hi, Hi I'm Blair Somerville. Okay, hold on a second. I'll get both of you guys in the picture. Keep your names again, but pretty loud because it's... Hi, I'm Blair Somerville. And I'm Green Simpson. So, uh, what, what's the story be about this dog behind you right here? Um, this is crazy. You say you were saying prior that you do know who the owner is. But well, I don't know who the owner is, but um, uh, the Sylvia and Denise down there, uh, father works for the same. They told us that Frankie, uh, they know their owners, but they're back as Frankie. Uh, and so right now you're trying to find somebody to take uh, take Frankie. Uh -huh. Yeah. And has there any been any uh, interested uh, owners or not? Uh, He's one of them. Uh, uh, there we go. Every good dog needs a good owner. Well, thank you very much. exactly does the night watch duty entail and how long actually first question is how long have you been uh, have you been in charge of the night watch duty nine days from and we decided to go from nine o'clock at night till six in the morning we have about several people that come to volunteer and we have two or three people walking and three or four, three people are like mobile at the beginning the military uh, were helping out and they were they were patrolling by foot and then they got busy so they have a now 24 hour mobile only so we continued the, the patrolling it covers all the, the whole of Hemiford and the outer perimeter and when they go around they check in the main things like the legion where all the food is stored the banks all the shops the stores look at generators they know where most of the generators are and 
later on in the night, the main thing I was checking was chimneys. I think it's take about four chimneys that were sparking and going up on the door and done to dampen it. So, and the they air, the hours they uh, varied. It could be an hour, hour, quarter up to two hours walking, and same with the, the mobile. Basically, that's it. Has, uh, have you run into any snags since this has started? Has there been any? Uh, have you? you uh, We're two professionals have snags. <laughs> not, not, not exactly on your, on uh, towards your turn. But ha has your team run into any uh, trouble since they've started the night watch? Have you uh, run into any difficult situations or anything since this well, has we started? Well, we had a couple of situations where we had to put, but not nothing we couldn't handle. You know, like someone if you. We have the, also we have the SQ, remember, so, and uh, we don't go around sort of, you know, resting people or anything like that, or harassing people. The idea is, is to be the ears and the eyes of the town. So any incident that <coughs> requires any authority, we get the SQ, which is in uh, immediate contact. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. The right side, the west side, got uh, electricity, and whoever got hooked up, so it's a good sign. The light's at the end of the tunnel, hopefully, uh, by Friday night, maybe Saturday, that the complete village uh, will have power. But that's not a promise. They're working on it, and uh, they're going full force. So we're getting good cooperation from uh, from, from the hydro people, and from the military that's helping the hydro. And we're really up. The township be prepared for at least another week, <coughs> in some cases maybe more than a week, depending on what street you live on. So. What that means is some people might be moving out of the shelter. It probably be reducing, but the shelter can close it. The shelter is still going to stay open, and I have actually no idea when the shelter is going to be closed. What's happening right now, Mr. Barrington uh, is going to move into the uh, United Church Hall, and they plan on opening up the uh, school at the United Church Hall. The teachers are they are already starting today, getting things organized. Today is Wednesday. They might open it tomorrow for the kids, and they might not, but I think his target date was, uh, was for Monday, because I already told them that the shelter will close at least for a week. Major Angus, there is a They might get the children in on Friday, and I think that will make a lot of parents happy to get the children out of the house. As, as the act, you can protect the group. But I'm not sure. I'll leave it up to the school board. Hopefully, Mr. Barron can do it. Anyway, I'll, I'll warn Mr. Barrington about it again and make sure, because he was also going to check the ice on the, uh, on the school itself. Um, so anyway, hopefully that's going to go well, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've been listening to stories from various people that visiting uh, different uh, communities like uh, our whole St. Remy and St. Bernard and Carrington, and uh, well, when I hear the stories, I'm very happy to, uh, to have the team that we have here uh, the way things are organized in the Hemingford and the way you're working, uh, I think uh, we probably should be a model for the whole MUC, or whatever you call it, and uh, maybe we're just all over, maybe I'll go around uh, giving lectures on how to, uh, how to establish our community. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, um, Dan already got a few phone calls this morning uh, before 8 o'clock. Uh, I just want to emphasize there are no handouts yet. Okay, whatever's been stockpiled at the school or at the Legion, don't hand it out freely to the people. Otherwise, you start handing out now, you're going to have a big lineup, and then people are going to say, I didn't get anything, they're going to complain. And, and, and <coughs> okay, nothing is being handed out for free. Um, whatever is left over at the end of this crisis is going to be stockpiled somewhere, and uh, it'll be up to the two councils to make a decision what they're going to do with it. What we're talking about, maybe a one time already, which is just an idea, maybe just donate it back to Montreal to the youth shelter or homeless people or whatever the case might be. But if we start handing things out, then someone's going to get something and someone's not going to get anything. If anyone really needs food badly that cannot come to the shelter, they come to the town hall, we'll, we'll give them a certificate, they go to the Legion, <coughs> and they, they, they pick up a box of food, depending on the size of the family. But they have to come to the town hall. It's got to be authorized uh, either by myself or Robert Um Another thing I
thing to uh, Mark McPherson there. We had a big problem with the ham operator we had here, uh, or the operators that we had here working 24 hours. Um, basically, I could see something like this happening again, not maybe this job, but maybe power going out, the telephone going out, and uh, Mr. McPherson recommended that we install a permanent antenna on top of the fire hall. And he's trying to do that through his organization, through all the other fire departments, or all the other communities also. So in case something like this happens again, that we at least have communication with the different fire departments, and then from there we could send uh, dispatches to various houses. The uh, installation of this antenna on top here with the proper brackets and all that is going to be approximately $1,000. And I think as he has the emergency committee, we could authorize it. Um, uh, something that will send a bill to the government, so because of the crisis, it's something that we had to do. The equipment we have here right now is all loaned from various operators. It's going to be taken back again, but I think we should have something firmly installed here. I talked to Mayor Hadley already. I haven't talked to uh, Claude yet, but I think we all agree with it. If by any chance the government does not accept it, then the price will be split between the uh, two uh, councils, the 70 30, and, and at least we have something here now, and then it's just a matter of moving the radio and hooking up and start talking with it. Does anyone disagree with that? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Showers are still working. I'm not sure. Does anyone know how many people? Oh, yeah, quite a few were there last night. Good. Yeah. So it's worth it. The well, well, last figure I heard was like there was 40 up there, and that wasn't at the end of the day. Okay, that's, yeah. that's good to hear. Yeah. I'm glad. So they will be operational again uh, every day from uh, 3 to 8, uh, so for the notice. Have you heard anything, Pat, that they want to increase the hours? Or no. Nothing else? So we'll, we'll leave it 3 to 8. I think that's a good time. School I mentioned. There's a new pay, new pay sheet out for week 2 with a different format. Uh, make sure you get a copy, and if you don't have a copy, uh, go to the town hall and they'll give you more copies. Uh, that's all the points I got. Uh, Mayor, sir? The only thing that we got a uh, everybody complaining about the road, we got a uh, greater wiry for our this morning. We went with the uh, other one, which is what they were doing, which is what they do. And also, uh, last year, the greater is working. Thank you. 
the guy <coughs> in Albany, it's all Kurt, to, uh, to do the maintenance work on him. And I think we'll open up a shop at the town hall in the garage there. And Laura will take him from there down to his place to uh, service him. So if anybody has problems with that, you can either contact Lauren directly or leave him at the town hall. No, who's Lauren? Lauren Healy on Jackson Road. Lauren okay, so her. he's going to come here? He'll come to the town hall. He's meeting with me at 10 o'clock to uh, get uh, organized with the guy in Albany that sold us the majority of his generators. And he'll work directly with this guy in Albany. Okay. And so when, home, also. when could we say the, uh, the shop will be open? Then? Right at noontime today. Noontime today. And anyone could bring, if they have problems bringing the generator? Right. They, they either at the town hall or to Lauren Healy's garage on Jackson Road. So we'll have a address set up for everybody to. Uh, for warranty work, Pat? Or? Yes. That's right. It's, it, everything's under warranty. Okay, okay that's a great idea. Uh, did we put that in the uh, main talk? Have we? No. We no. Just so there's another issue coming out for Saturday. Maybe we should put that. Once we get I'll speak to Alex about that. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I think transportation's okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. Thank you. Alain? Uh, demain, Monsieur Gagnon. Dominique Gagnon de la direction de la santé publique ouais. va aimerait venir ici pour vous expliquer un petit peu le, le problème de, de danger de re, euh, retour à la maison. Ensuite, il pourrait voir Alex lui donner de l'information pour mettre dans son journal. Okay. Et je souhaiterais également que Nancy Shaw vienne pour vous faire une bon, bonne traduction. Alors, il veut venir ici quand Aujourd'hui Non, non, demain, demain. matin au meeting. Euh, sur aussi. le meeting, c'est demain. Oui, oui. Okay. Ce ne sera pas euh, tellement long. Euh, autrement, tout est sous contrôle. Oui. On vérifie les personnes, euh, on visite des personnes encore dans l'après-midi pour voir, euh, s'assurer santé, euh, nourriture et tout ça. Et il n'y a rien de spécial pour le moment. Okay. Je pense euh, pour demain matin, euh, le bureau va être Ah, oui, 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 oui. Euh, demain matin, ah, ouais. demain, et puis euh, euh, il doit venir à l'école normalement. Oui, mais euh, parce que son bureau est fermé. Et et sûr, maintenant, il va rien ouvrir. Mais il a reçu l'électricité hier soir. Euh, 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 S'il y a des changements, je vais, je vais le savoir aujourd'hui, puis demain matin, je vais vous en apprendre. Il n'est pas là aujourd'hui, voilà. Non, non. Wednesday, non. Il va Docteur Lu. Non, Lu. Lu. De Saint-Rémy. Oui. Il m'a dit que si vous aviez des besoins, appelez ça à Rémi. Et puis le docteur, lui, euh, demeure à, aux États-Unis, à Pittsburgh. Oh. Et il passe ici tous les, tous les jours. Okay. Il doit s'arrêter aux besoins.
guarantee would be no darn sleep in the bar then you might consider Well, from what I saw yesterday, she's open from 11 to 5. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, so well, like no, there's nothing being done right now. We're going to call them in to talk to them personally. Uh, Mark? Yeah, I have a small print statement, but I've written small on it, so I actually have, <laughs> I have several points. Willa actually asked me to make a few, but she didn't have any points. So. <laughs> <laughs> what does he know you? <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Hadley for the, the cake that he brought up. The, the soldiers, or his wife, brought up the soldiers uh, last night, they really liked it. The, the jam under the icing was a real hit, so that was that was very nice. Uh, I'll just tell you what is essentially happening with us. Okay. Uh, we are aiming to be finished all our taskings in the area by Friday at noon. And so if people have any equipment which has been long stand by the Canadian forces, we'd like to have it back Friday if we could so that we can start to turn it in. Uh, and we'll be uh, sending an advance party of 18 of our soldiers back Thursday night. So people may see a bus leaving, but the rest of us are staying uh, until Sunday morning. Uh, so I have to put in a post-operation report tomorrow. If you have any points, uh, I think uh, more if there were things that annoyed you or you thought we could have done better, is more what we'd be interested in. If you have those points, perhaps you could give them to Carl, and if you could pass them to me, or uh, Chris tomorrow at the meeting, Carl. I mean, it's it's fine to criticize. That's the way we all learn. So if you think that there's things we could I'm have done better. I'm trying to think of something where they <laughs> criticize on, but I can't think of it. <laughs> if anything comes up, though, please feel free to put them in, and I'd be glad to have the points. Um, we, we would like to get the, s the school superintendent in uh, Saturday morning. Yeah, between 9 and 10 would be best for us if that's possible. Uh, and you have the time? 12 o'clock? 12 o'clock it is, okay. Um, and we have a form that we'll just get him to uh, go through with us. Uh, and then and perhaps, I, I can't remember Riel's wife's name, but the uh, caretaker. Uh, okay. If she could come to the school maybe around 11 Sunday. Uh, I would like someone there just to make sure that they're not upset with the condition as we walk out the door and we'll give her back a key and, uh, and that would be good. I just don't want to leave it uh, without someone looking. In case we mess it up after the superintendent comes over. But we'll try not to. Uh, I don't have any word on those hay boxes, Carl. I don't know what happened to them. I mean, they were buck sheep. We're still trying to track them down. Okay. If you see them, you I'll <coughs> tell me that you've got them and I'll stop. But trying to find them. Um, it's taken the soldiers about 100 hours of uh, like work time, 100 man hours or soldier hours per kilometer of uh, hydro line that we've salvaged. And so we've done uh, just over 9 kilometers so far. And we should get about another 7 done today, I'm hoping. And uh, the soldiers were all very happy to see the lights on and very warm last night. So uh, we're very glad. Um, the, my BSM would like to Pat Bruce afterwards, uh, just to get your addresses, uh, and we can sort out some stuff about the van, uh, and also the phones, Bruce, uh, I mean, Sunday, those can come out any time you want, I guess, uh, would, be, would be the best. Uh, now, I was, I mean, it's, I hope you won't find this out of place, but uh, I, I would recommend strongly to you all that you, you do up your own uh, post-operation report, and, and put it into a book and keep it as an emergency measures plan. You are very well organized here, and uh, I hope that the next crisis won't come until we're all uh, found somewhere in an old age home at the age of 104, and uh, someone says, "Oh, this guy was alive during the last war." Uh, and I think it would be well worth your while to sort that up to your provincial emergency measures organization because I think you are a very good example, um, and uh, I think that your strongest point has been that you've all kept your sense of humor. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. And, uh, that, that's Thanks, Mike. Uh, one, one question. Uh, see, as you know, it's been quite a bit on television with the military working in different communities. Do the different units have different mandates? And the reason I ask that, I see in some communities the military took over the complete kitchen, they're doing all the cooking. Uh, another place I see the military doing all the sawing of the wood, and I said, geez, I said, uh, they're getting spoiled over there. Yeah. What, why can the civilians do it? Why is the military doing it? What has happened in some communities, uh, unlike here, uh, and I think it's been pointed out to me that we've been rather unique uh, with the amount of civilian cooperation there's been. Like whenever the guys were out with Bill, there were always several civilian people working on the roads as well. And that's not been the case. Uh, a lot of communities have uh, essentially laid down when the army came because it's like, well, the army's here and they'll do all the work. Really? So again, it's much to your credit. I mean, uh, it's been noted that you all worked very hard along with us. Uh, and I also want to thank both the mayors for uh, any prods they gave to hire.
hydro to get them to cooperate with us more. In some areas, hydro still hasn't really asked or given the military any jobs, and uh, we've had to be fairly proactive in arranging where to work for them. Um, so if there is, you know, if you have a 65 soldiers sitting in a town and you can't get hydro work, essentially, then what they've been doing is, is any other things that are useful uh, for the town. Um, our three priorities, first were life saving, second was essential service restoration, and third was other tasks to help the town. So in essence, if you don't get the hydro task, which is priority two, you maintain the priority three tasks. Uh, so in our area, uh, my CO and, and in this area, uh, myself have decided that it's in your best interest if we get the hydro lines clean, I think. Uh, yeah. And so that's all. We've been dedicating so many people that we just haven't had people to run kitchens and that. Uh, but you, you haven't needed it either. No, no, so it worked very well. Yeah. Good. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, Carol's not here this morning. Uh, Carol's breaking her glory. She has to be at Club Price this morning <laughs> at uh, 7 o'clock with a thousand dollar gift certificate, so she's busy running around the aisles with her four shopping carts, I imagine. Okay, Florence. Okay, it seems to be going well. Lisa got started yesterday, and she has washed basically the desk. You know, the whole clean up and make sure <coughs> that the are done with time to a little bit. So it was really did get an excellent cleaning yesterday. Okay. And Lise is going to be back with us. Who? Lise Vigna. Who Lise? Yes. Oh, she mm -hmm. she came you? in yesterday yeah. and <coughs> she's, uh, What's her job? She, she's with us on the phone oh, and she's, you know, with the, and she's been, did an excellent job, right, Lila? Yeah. So we're very pleased Good. to have her. Now, all these clothing that came in last night, are we allowed to give them out? Clothing? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. an emergency. There's a lot of it that came yeah. in, and uh, I feel very strongly if people need it in the community, they should have it rather than stored in boxes. No, no. Yeah. I say, uh, yeah. Florence, if there's an emergency yeah. for now, let's give it out as an emergency for now, and then after the whole thing is finished, then we'll reassess the whole thing. If it's clothing, yeah, you're right, it's going to have to store again. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that we'll uh, go through today, probably Jim and I go through this, you know, and sort of get it into sections. As long as there's no scrounging, like, you know, I, I got to know the, the scroungers here in Hemingford. Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. it's pretty sad, but anyway. So just have a tight lid on. Okay. Uh, yeah. Could you just tell us what's on the uh, on entertainment? I think I'm, that's still on the RCMP for tonight. The RCMP is on for tonight. I should have brought that calendar down. There's many, many things on. There's the trip to Montreal to the Fairview for some of the seniors are going. To Laval today. Oh, really? To Laval, there's the trip for the children. Um, the bus, school bus is coming out to pick them up. It's is it eight thirty or nine? Yeah, they've gone. They're 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 okay, yeah. they're going to be entertained in there for the day. With bowling, swimming, whatever. Okay. Um, what else do we have? We have um, Beverly Shuku coming out with a variety show. That's on Saturday. Okay. I got the calendar on front of me. Yeah. Can't visualize because the calendar starts. It's not our Monday, Tuesday. No, but I remember you saying it's Saturday. Um, there's just many, many things, and more people are calling to uh, come in and entertain us. We had a lady yesterday came. She's from uh, Manitoba. No, sorry, Alberta, Edmonton. And they were going around the provinces um, trying to help people get through this disaster part with the children, child care, and uh, we said at this point we didn't know exactly how long our power would be off, and that we felt that this immediate time we didn't think there was a need, but she left us her phone number and we could get back to her if we need advice. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Well, so I haven't found it with the church yet, so I'm wondering or not. As far as I know, there is. There is? Yeah, yeah okay. I think so, too. Okay. Mark, for if you sold your free in the evening, you know, they're welcome to come any of that stuff okay. taking care of the school. So maybe Florence you make some sort of a schedule. And give it to the uh, uh, give it to the military and so they know when to come, when not to come. When is the magic show? The variety show too. The people are coming out but also yeah, volunteer to serve here. the meals before they do the variety yeah, show. Well, so the help. I yeah. thought it would be nice for our own people to see how somebody else do it for them for okay. Thanks Lauren. And so we're uh, waiting to get uh, 16 wheelers. It was supposed to be here between 6 and 6.30 last night. I stayed home and uh, wouldn't leave the house because just didn't get any phone calls. So I had to have some on here. And so uh, waiting. Still waiting here. It's uh, from FW Myers Brokers uh, in Champlain. It seemed like it was coming in from Buffalo. Oh. And uh, there's supposed to be wood in there. There's uh, wood in there. There's all kinds of things. Okay. That's it, right? That's it. Yeah. Nick shows up here, where do we send that? Legion. Legion. Except the wood. 
Okay, one more question very quickly. Mark. No, I'm Bruce? Yep. Sorry. I said yes. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> very quick on the, you know. I'd like to know when the Army leaves <coughs> what route you're taking. I think you should drive past the school. I think the town should be here out on the, on the side of the street to, to wave goodbye to them. Bruce, I'm you sorry, I'll let you organize that. Yeah. Oh, but I mean, the, yeah. the people in the school are right there. Yeah. They drove sure. by the school, and when you're piling up, you got to leave yeah. sometime. It would be nice to yeah. everybody, to, you know, there might be people well, there. I, I can tell you, sure, we're, we're, it's not going to be much of a, a convoy, because by that time we will have turned our vehicles back in, I'm going to have uh, two buses. But uh, wow. still, wherever you at, we'll be... Uh, Imagine going towards Snappy Road. Uh, the route hasn't been specified. We're actually going straight back to St. Jean. And uh, sure they so, but we can easily, yeah, that, Just that's fine. School 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 yeah. If you want, I mean, we can drive through a couple of times so they think there are more <laughs> 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 Okay, Bruce, you know what? In fact, that could be announced on the church service on the, uh, Sunday morning. Mark, we'll start with it. Okay. <coughs> Alex, uh, this is the second round. I think in the future, when we have, if we ever have this again, I want to call the meeting till 9.30 and I want to have room on. No, but we could call out to the meeting at 8. So we <laughs> if you knew Gisela, you know why I'm late. I have to get up her, I have to get up first to get her ready. Oh, gee. Uh, she wasn't ready by 8 o'clock this morning. Yeah. She was at the bus. So yeah, I know what I got up at 5.30. I know what they did. got the stove going, going, made the water, made the coffee. Okay, Listen to her yelling at me. She didn't get up until <laughs> 6 30. All the <laughs> time, smart time to do it for her. Anyway, <laughs> you're on camera, we go. Oh, she, she'll know. You're in trouble. That can't be printed. <laughs> That's off the record. <laughs> um, I, I, these are my uncleared notes from yesterday, and this, there's nothing really other than update me on the school route. Has anybody uh, looked at it yet? I don't know. No, I don't think so, but it's You're in their hands anyway. Who's there? Who's school there? board. Yeah, but they, I don't want to collapsing on everybody in this place. No, I don't. It's urgent, okay? Yeah. Garages. Are they there?
are at the orchard of... Uh, Claudette and Real Dauphiné. Claudette and Real Dauphiné. Looking at some of the damage that was created through the ice storm. A lot of the apple trees have been torn, broken apart. These trees are totally finished. And the worst part, every kind of tree, it's open. If it's getting more cold, with the seeds there, and when they open like that, they can kill all the trees down.
roughly about how old do you figure this tree, uh, how, how long have you, uh, how old would this tree be approximately anyways? That tree is about, about uh, 35 years old. And usually, uh, usually it should have lasted for about how much more longer, would, like without uh, this disaster? Back? No, but it, it should have lasted how much longer uh, it would have uh, been able to produce apples before? Uh, it, it takes, uh, that's, a, that's a big apple tree, it takes about 10 to 15 year, years before the predation. Yeah. You get something good about those, uh, a big crab takes about 10 to 15 years. If, if we didn't have the ice storm, it would have been able to produce apples for uh, at least uh, how much more longer would have been able to? Like that tree there is about, just like I told you, 35, put it 35, 40 years old. They good to rate about to 100 years old. I mean, if you trim them every uh, winter, uh, the archer is clean and everything, apple trees survive long, long, long. Yeah, you said you roughly have uh, have 45 to 65 percent damage on your apple trees. Um, will you have any type of insurance because of that? Because it is your main uh, no, source of income. We have no insurance for that. Nobody got an apple tree to have no insurance for that. And you were saying that you were planning on starting up a uh, sugar bush this year to uh, to help out on profits, but now that uh, we got nothing. Don't have everything that at all. Everything broken and uh, so far there, everything, uh, we're losing everything so far. And uh, the government won't be able to help out or nothing, so that's it. I mean, we're asking for help, but I don't know what it's going to turn up. Here we are interviewing Pierre Arnaldi after the... Uh, after the crisis, now yes, he has no, electricity. It's not after the crisis, it's after the power is back. The crisis is not over. <laughs> so, uh, what was it like uh, trying to fill out prescriptions without uh, power? And, off, uh, off. Let's say I'll survive. <laughs> so, you had uh, no computers or anything for First that three matter? Days, uh, two or four days, we didn't have any computer. And after that, we, um, we had a small generator, just enough to. Uh, one uh, electric heater and uh, two computers, and the weather, uh, the temperature was about uh, 40 degrees and sometime below that. So uh, it was. Uh, but even under working uh, uh, these conditions, uh, everybody got their uh, proper medications and. Roughly, I would I would say roughly. Ooh. Oh, huh? <laughs> I hit the jackpot. I can't do that. You know, I can't do two things at the same time. <laughs> Gee, I, I hit the jackpot there. <laughs> For you. Okay. And so do you feel after uh, after what has gone through a relief. that you'll be better prepared if such a situation may arise again? I don't know. I have a, I have a small generator now. I don't know if, uh, if it's going to help next time. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Here we are in the gymnasium at the Hanford Elementary School, trying a little farewell party to find the men in the army that helped us in the disaster of Red Storm that
leaders across our large country of Canada. If people had heard of us at all, we were known for our beautiful apple orchard and park safari. Then it started to rain and rain and rain. The rain turned into ice. By the time it stopped seven days later, every exposed area was covered by a thin layer of ice. Thousands of trees <laughs> lost most of their branches, hydro line laying on the ground, and transformer dangled in the air. Emmingford was in the dark, but that when the indomitable spirit of its citizen began to shine. Even Mother Nature could not extinguish that. Since the start of this catastrophe, our community has rolled up its sleeve and pulled together as never before. Shelter and nourishment were provided for those unable to remain in their homes or cook their food, firewood and other supplies were obtained for those who needed it and a virt virtual eye was kept. None was ignored on neglected alone. That was dark and cold. In their homes many of us known our community much better than before. We could not have done this without the moral and physical support of hundreds of people outside our community, often an unbelievable amount of support. A large part of that help was provided by these fine men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces who arrived to the, like a cavalry and immediately, down to, immediately got down to work. The regular, regularly patrol to be ensure our safety and security. They greatly assisted in the physical cleanup so power could be restored more efficiently. They even played sports with our youths to help them dispel excess energy. Words can hardly express our gratitude for their efforts on our behalf. We believe, we believe given a few items to, I can't read myself. <laughs> I need to As a physical reminder of your stay here, I'd like to present each you of each one of you a pin displaying our municipal coat of arms. I urge everyone to join me in giving a round of applause to these dedicated men and women of B Battery from Shiloh, Manitoba. Vous soldats, 
soldats, officiers, sous-officiers, pour la coopération que vous êtes, dont vous avez fait preuve et le dévouement. Et j'espère que vous continuerez de même et le pays a besoin de gens comme vous. I like in the name of the other member of branch 244 from the Royal Canadian Legion to thank you people, officers, and officers and troops for the de uh, devotion and the cooperation you show in this disaster. And I hope you go ahead like that and I think the country needs people like you. Thank you all. Thank you. 